Got the mold all built, both sides, front and back. And what I am doing now is I am sanding and uh, sort of cleaning up the mold prior to taking it apart because we're about to pop the thing apart. And the thing about fiberglass is I have no big love of fiberglass. To be honest, uh, having a mold like this in your house is worse than owning a Theraposa Blondi. By the way, that's a Goliath bird-eating spider, the largest spider in the world. And what the spider does when you piss it off is it kicks hairs on you, urticating hairs, and they get on your hands and it drives you insane. They're like prickly pears. If you live in the desert, you know all about prickly pears. You get those little teeny tiny tiny little fibers in or spines in you and you can't get them out and they're and they're horrible and they hurt for years and it's miserable and uh, it's nothing compared to fiberglass. Look at this stuff. Oh my god, look at all these miserable ultra fine fibers that come off of this stuff. Now, I know all of you guys are laughing at me, all you fiberglass experts are going, well, it's because you don't know how to work with it. But I am telling you, these things, you can just feel them. They're just covered in microscopic fine little hairs of glass fiber, and they're needle sharp, and they're getting you. So what you got to do is you got to knock them all off. So I go over the whole thing. And I just gently, you know, if you, even if you rub your hand over, you can catch a needle and go right into your skin. And then the thing's microscopic and you can't get it out. It makes you mental. Not my favorite thing, fiberglass. That's why, you know, you, if you watch me make do fiberglass shells. This is not good fiberglass technique. I fully admit that. I am not an expert fiberglasser. Mostly, oh, see, I got a fiber in my thumb. And it's, it's literally submicroscopic. And, but you can feel it. They have a genius for picking, picking, picking exactly where your nerve endings are and lodging themselves in your nerve endings. Not my favorite things. Anyway, but it makes a really hard shell, and I think it's going to make a really nice mold. And we'll get it all prepped. We'll get the edges trimmed off, which we're going to go do next. And then we're going to pour some resin. seeing the parting line all the way around. Obviously, I'm working blind here, and I don't want to get anywhere near the, mo the model, the part inside. Uh, this is a nice rough trim. It's going to let me pop the top off, but um, we're going to need to refine it and uh, work with it once we get it all apart and get the blanket off and get it all set up. But all right, next step is accomplished. I pulled this half of the mold off. And uh, it was a slow process because I wanted to go super slow and super careful because it was stuck on there pretty hard. And uh, I have a glass model here, a glass master, and I really, really don't want to break it. So I couldn't just use, uh, you know, crazy amounts of force to pop the two things apart. This rubber blanket is about as thin as I would like it to be. Uh, it's, as you can see, it's not super thick. It's maybe a quarter to three-eighths of an inch thick, but it does stick well to the shell. It fits the shell perfectly, and when you get it in place, it takes a minute to press it into place and to get it on there, the, sh the shell supports it well, and I think it will hold its shape. You really don't want blank molds like this to be floppy. If they're too thin, if you cheap out on the rubber, <laughs> they will flop all over the place and they will just not, not stick in place, not hold in place. It's not good. You will have problems. They'll collapse in or you have all kinds of problems. You don't want it. This mold blanket is as thin as I would want it to be and no thinner. It could be an, another quarter of an inch. I could have used even more layers of rubber, would have earned anything except it would have cost more. That's the only difference. Would have made an even better blanket frankly. You want your blanket to be able to hold its shape. So the trick to getting this thing apart is lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of wooden wedges. I cut up a whole bunch of them 
and I'm just going to use these wooden wedges to go all around very carefully, very slowly, and uh, gently pry this shell off of this mold. Okay, it's going. All right, got it. Beautiful. Who got that off? All right, next step is just to clean up the edges of this mold and prep it and figure out what kind of cleat system we're going to use, and then we'll cast some clear resin. I assembled this mold and did some tests uh, and uh, put it all together with rubber bands and filled it up with water. <laughs> and you're saying, you filled up a mold with water? You say to never fill up molds with water. You gotta know when to break the rolls, and this was one of those times. From the first time I looked at this part to cast, I spotted where the issue was gonna be, and that is the bottom edge. This bottom edge is, it's gonna pour from the top. The resin's gonna pour from the top. And that is why, if you look at the sides of the molds, I have a relatively narrow, but an interlocking edge on the sides here, but it's narrow. If anything, the pressure's pulling away from the sides. There's, very, there's no pressure on, the, on this joint. All of the pressure of the weight of the resin is down here along this edge. That, that's where it's gonna leak. So I made a, if you'll notice in the design of the mold, I have a wider landing. Even in here, that's a good solid inch and a quarter landing all through in here on the hope that I could squeeze it together tight enough to not have it leak. So I did the water test and it did leak, which prompted me to do this. Let's look at it on this one. Pull this off. These blocks are gonna give a lot more squeezing force. And I did a second test and it worked a lot better. It held the water for a lot longer, but as I filled the mold to the top, water started to leak out the bottom. I knew that I was gonna have these issues with this piece. So one thing good about the blanket is it, it goes back on nice and neat, just literally just falls, falls back onto the mother. So that's just, that works out great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-paint this edge with resin. All right, I dispensed out A and B of clear resin. And let's go ahead and mix it. Now we have a 14 minute gel time here. So we have plenty of gel time. I have no way to put this under pressure. I don't have a tank that will fit this. So we're doing this sans pressure, which means we're going to accept whatever bubbles we get. What we can't have is any hairs fall out of this brush. If it does, we're going to be in trouble. That's not going to work. There will be flash and there will be drips. And we're going to just accept that as a consequence of the design of this mold. Okay, here we go. All right, let's put this mold together. Let's put this mold together. Have it just fall in place. Yeah, nice, nice. All right, mold is together. Let's get our bands. Come across here like this. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is I am gonna use a fairly ferocious number of rubber bands. And I'm gonna select rubber bands for how well they fit. Now you see what I'm talking about. See how the rubber bands are pulling across those blocks, pulling down here, pulling that nice and tight. That's what those blocks are for, is to make that connection nice and tight. If you put the rubber bands on in order, then you know how to take them off. You can take them off in order, which makes a lot of sense, actually, when you're taking the molds of rubber bands off later. You don't have to think about it. Like that, and like this. Over here like that, under in there, and I pull that tight in there. Let's put these clamps on, just for a little bit more squeeze on the sides. Okay, all right, now let us see how liquidy our resin still is. It should not have gelled. It has not gelled. So we are going to pour this resin. It's very liquidy. Now I'm going to rock that resin a little bit from side to side and see if that resin I just added in there will help to seal up everything. The gel time on this resin is long as 14 minutes. And so it's going to give me time to sort of rotate that resin down into that seam 
And also, maybe if I'm lucky, push some bubbles out of the way. If, if I catch bubbles, we're going to catch bubbles in this, and there's not much that I can do about it. And it's still flowing pretty good. I'm just going to keep doing this until this resin gels to the point where it's not moving around anymore. Sure would be handy to know how much resin to use on this, but I'm just going to waste it. I'm just going to sneak up on it and waste it. Okay, here we go. It doesn't pour rapidly, this nozzle. It's got a relatively small entrance hole, given the size of the part. I didn't really have a lot of options as to where to fill it from. Filled nicely, though. Okay, good pour. All right. Any leakage? No, look at that. Good. Mold is holding super well so far. Just kind of rocking it to make sure that I get bubbles out of any of those sharp corners. Uh, but it's basically looking pretty good. I'll do another pour. We'll do as many pours as it takes to fill it. I will come back to you when I've got the thing filled. This mold managed to fulfill all of my darkest predictions for it. Uh, despite having pre-painted the seam and doing a light first pouring, still managed to leak quite a bit out of that bottom seam. So to stop that up, I was forced to put some clamps over the leaky spot. I'm never a big fan of using any kind of clamp to hold a mold closed. And the reason for that is it's almost impossible to get the clamping pressure even from clamp to clamp. Uh, rubber bands tend to kind of equalize themselves a little bit, but clamps don't. So if any one clamp is much tighter than the ones next to it, you can get uneven mold closure and, and you can distort the rubber and you can have all kinds of problems. But anyway, we finally did get the thing poured. And uh, as you can see, it is full to the top. So now we're just gonna let that thing cure up. And uh, next step will be to take it apart and see what we got. Fun times. <laughs> we're ready to pull this thing open. Oh Lordy, I have no idea what this casting is gonna look like. Anytime a mold leaks, that makes me very nervous because you can really have voids where the leak was. Not saying we will, but you could. Seen that happen. This project from day one has been fraught with all kinds of uncertainties. Number one, it's clear resin, which I am not an expert at. Number two, it's got an odd shape. Number three, I can't pressurize it. So there's all kinds of potential places where things can go wrong. The thing about running a custom shop is that just about every job brings with it things that are an experiment, things that are un, you know, unknown, <laughs> potential for failure. Uh, it's just the nature of it. And so you kind of get used to the idea that you may have mold failure. Do everything you can to avoid it, but it's always possible. And you see the advantage of taking, putting the rubber bands on in order makes it very easy for me to take them off because I can take them off in order. If you crisscross them willy-nilly, takes a long time to pull them off because you don't know which one to which bands to pull off first hard to tell all right enough yammering let's get to opening this box up see what we've got shells come right off neat and sweet no issue there not terrible leakage just a little bit in here not a tremendous amount but you saw the leak on the table Come on, come on, come on. Popped right off. Again, not a problem. Okay, let's do this thing. <laughs> let's peel it. Oh, man. Okay, caught one. Ooh, caught one bubble. Let's see. Holy moly, that's not terrible. There's one bubble right. In, no, it's not a bubble. It's, maybe it's a surface flaw. Holy moly, let us see. Yeah, we've got some bubblage. Wow, it's quite light. Oh yeah. Here is our problem. Lots and lots and lots and lots of bubbles. You can see the bubbles. You can see all those bubbles in there? That is a problem. Boy, it is shot through with bubbles. 
So we're going to figure out how in the heck I'm going to get rid of those bubbles. I, I mean, the one obvious thing is to vac the resin before I put it in, and I will do that on subsequent castings. But let's, let's just for fun compare it to the original. How do they look? How do they compare? Color-wise, it's not terrible. Uh, it looks to me like it's quite a bit more transparent, this is. Let's see. So how's that look to you guys? You know, I don't think uh, it's that the, the, the differences in look is that terrible. This is definitely slightly more opaque. No question about that. But putting up, put it up in a chandelier above your head, I'm not sure that people would notice right away. Okay, big problem to solve is going to be all those little tiny bubbles. The only way I can think of to alleviate that problem and make it as good as we can make it is to back the resin. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. It doesn't look like there's a lot of flaws with how the resin bonded together. Flash comes off pretty easy. We knew there'd be a lot of flash, but it comes off easy. All right, we're going to go on. We're going to keep casting these till we get them right, and uh, we'll see what happens with a vac experience. Now, the good thing is I know exactly how much this weighs, so uh, I can seal up the mold, vac it, and pour it in one shot, and maybe that will give us some good castings. We'll know soon enough. I made a second casting. It's hard and ready to go. Let's take a look at it, see what we got. This was tricky to do. I applied everything I learned from the first casting to this one. Hopefully, we will have a better result. This mold did not leak at all, not even a little bit. So the uh, sealing job that I gave on it, the paint job of resin, worked really well this time. Now you may ask, as you watch me do all this tedious band removal, why don't I just use screws? or some kind of mechanical fastener all the way, clamps, anything. And the answer is, it's really hard to get the pressure from clamp head to clamp head even. And invariably, some are tighter than others, and that causes distortion in the mold. It's a problem. I still go, always go back to my favorite hold close method, and that is rubber bands, because they do what you want to do, and that is to provide the most even, most well-distributed pressure all around the mold. They just work and they're easy and cheap. So they got a lot going for them. Okay, let's split this thing off. I love how this thing just falls out of the shell. That's nice. No worries there. It just fell out. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm nervous now. I put a lot of effort into this. Let's see if my efforts paid off at all or if I just bombed again. <laughs> Oh no, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. You're looking at it with me. I haven't seen it yet. Wow. Well, it's not perfect but it's a huge improvement. It's interesting how some of the layers really have almost no bubbles in them. It's, I'd say I reduced it about 90% of the bubbles. Boy, I'm longing for a pressure pot that I could put this thing into that was big enough. I just don't have one. Wow. Not sure if we can get it a heck of a lot better than that. There are bubble flaws. I'll get some close-ups of them so you can see them. But otherwise, the casting came out pretty nice. I pre-painted this edge, as you'll recall, and you would expect a tremendous amount of flash, but in fact, get almost no flash. Uh, that's completely acceptable. Well, I have to make one more casting, and I think that uh, it would be worth a separate video. To, to, to see if I can refine this even further. The, the techniques that I used for this uh, really, really helped and uh, made a much better casting. But I think if I can refine them even further, let's do it in a separate video. Let's take it and let's see if we can get 100% clean casting. 
out of this without using pressure. That'll be the challenge. Hey, I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that like button. Let me know what you think. <laughs> if you have any ideas for how I can make this easier and better than, hey, wow, how you watch me do it, let me know. Thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate your being here, and I will see you next week.